Okay, that's cool. Now I got a um a list of songs, and I would love to hear the history or the background behind them, uh -huh. or just anything that you remember from the studio session that day. So, the first song that I have for you is Marcus Houston's Circle. Circle. Marcus Houston's Circle was done uh, in a Boom Boom Room uh, in L.A. It's a studio in L.A. owned by Will Smith. And uh, I remember we had some meetings with, with Marcus um, prior to actually having the session. It was a very impromptu session. We ran into Marcus, I believe, outside of the W uh, in Westwood in L.A. And we just chopped it up. You know, <laughs> what you doing with your project? What's going on? And he was like, man, I definitely want to get in with you guys. And, and we made it happen within a couple of days. He came by the studio. Uh, he and his team explained that they wanted a record that was um, as is, is emotionally tapping as, you know, the Usher things that Brian has done. The You Got It Bad, the hits, you know, you know that, that Brian did with Usher and, and, and the, the songs that we've done with Chris Brown. And they wanted something like that for Marcus. And I remember... Uh, distinctively, they said that they wanted to use Marcus falsetto. Like a lot of people didn't know, know that Marcus had a good falsetto. So, in approaching that record, um, we had a conversation myself, Brian, and Adonis, and and talk in terms of what we wanted to write about. And and Adonis really took the helm in writing the majority of that song. Um, he just made sure that that there was a part or parts where Marcus could, you know, uh, demonstrate his 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 high range. His high octave, his his you know kind of head voice, and it was it was you know it was it was classic I think, um, and it was a great it was a great time for him to a great record for him to showcase that, um, in that it was a very emotional record. Um, Brian and I did the track. Adonis you know took over really with the writing and did a marvelous job, and within uh, a day we got a word that it was going to be the single. You know, they were really excited about the record. They shot the the, uh, the video, I believe, outside, right outside of L.A. Um, in the desert area. But they did some in scene, in, some in studio shots, and that was probably one of the quickest placements I've ever been involved in in terms of creating the record. And you know, almost the same day, knowing that it's going to go on an album, not only but it's going to be the next single, and we're shooting the video in a couple of weeks. So that was a great experience and and definitely memorable. Wow, uh, wow. Um, next song I got for you is Mariah Carey's I Stay in Love. What a beautiful record. Um, that whole Mariah Carey experience is something I can never forget. Uh, you know, and, and I, and I, want, I want to say this. A lot of people, a lot of artists do write, and a lot of artists say they write and don't write, but Mariah Carey is a phenomenal songwriter. So um, for the record... It's, 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 ironically, she has a song called for the record, but <laughs> Mariah Carey has been influential in writing a lot of her hits. Um, and it, this song didn't change it. Um, we first met, well, I first met Mariah uh, at her penthouse in uh, New York. And it's the same penthouse that's been on MTV Cribs. Brian and Adonis had previously worked with Mariah several times. And for this particular project, they worked with her... Um, a few weeks prior to on, on, on an island. And so they were really familiar with her temperament and everything. And I was kind of the newbie on the scene. So, you know, walking into, you know, a house for the first time, it was, it was kind of like, you know, it was, the, actually, let me take that back. I, I, I made an error in the story. I didn't meet her at her house. We did go to her house, but I met her at uh, Tommy Hilfiger's summer home in the Hamptons. I believe it was Labor Day weekend. And we were going there, myself, Brian, and Adonis, we were going there to work on this song. Um, so we went, into the, we went into the, uh, to the home, and she was actually on the beach. Beautiful home. I mean, you know, bright color, furniture, mahogany wood, and, you know, big window pane patio, long walk to the beach. And it was at night, so everybody's lighting fireworks. And I'm like, man, this is like a video right here. So <laughs> we're going out to the beach to meet Mariah. Or well, at least I am for the first time, and she's so sweet. She's out there with a family, and she's like, yo, pleasure to meet you, and that's, this and that. And, and thinking in my mind, are we really going to write a song tonight after just chilling on the beach? Are we <laughs> really going to do that? We really came here to work? So, but lo and behold, she was ready to rock. You know, Mariah is a, is a workhorse. So within a few minutes, we went downstairs, and she had her portable studio or her mobile studio set up there because she was renting the house for, for the summer. So uh, all three of us sat around, uh, Brian in front of the piano, and 
me, you know, Mariah sitting on the edge of, of, of the couch, and I believe I was on the floor, I and mean, Adonis was in, uh, in another corner, and we just started brainstorming. Brian came up with a, a melody, you know, the, the distinctive melody in the hook, I Stay In Love With You. He came up with that on the piano, and we kept reoccurring this, this theme, I Stay In Love With You, but we had no lyrics, but great melodies. And as we're trying to figure this out, lo and behold, walks in Daryl Simmons and L.A. Reid whom I've never met either of at that time. And if you're talking about pressure, the head of her label just walked in and we're trying to create a smash and we still don't have all the lyrics yet. <laughs> so that was some amazing pressure. L.A. sat down. Daryl sat down. They watched us for a while. And L.A. Nod, nodded his head and smiled. And I felt good. I felt relieved. And he was like, guys, keep it up. I love what I'm hearing. And then he leaves. And then Mariah's like, that's a good sign. So I'm like, wow. So I, I feel like we're doing well. So we didn't finish the song that night. Here's where the penthouse came in. I got it confused. We went back to New York a couple of days later, and she invited us to the house where she has a full studio, and we were there to finish the song. Um, we got there, and Mariah was having this nice dinner um, with some, you know, you know, some some uh, business executives that she was, you know, having a meeting with. And uh, after she was done, they left, and it was just myself, Mariah. Uh, Brian and Adonis, and we went out on her patio, um, which is right next to the Moroccan room. I'm like, I took a camera in my brain, so like I'm, I'm visualizing everything as I'm walking through, and the patio is beautiful. It's nighttime, you know. There's, you know, there's, there's just, it's just beauty all around. Unfortunately, the Twin Towers was the view, um, not at that time, but you know, prior to when she first bought the uh, townhouse, and that wasn't there, so that was a little bit somber. But at the end of the day, we were having a good time. We sat around. We took the tape player out or the CD player out, and we played the um, we played the track, and we wrote the song. We finished writing the song. We finished having a conversation on what do we want to talk about, and we wrote the lyrics. And that's pretty much how the magic happened. Um, I mean, it was an amazing experience, and and working with Mariah is phenomenal. Not only is she a great songwriter, she's a great person. And she's a great friend, you know, and she's, she's very funny. And, and you know, we, we had great laughs together, all of us. We even went out and, and went to a party, you know, later on that night and just hung out. We just had a good time. It was a good time and good energy. And that song, of course, um, became a single. And it was the theme song for her, her um, launch of her perfume um, on the commercial. So it was a pretty big deal. And, and I was just, you know, fortunate and blessed to be a part of it. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually wish that that song had become even bigger because I felt like it was a hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, there's a, there's a few songs that I have in my career that I wish would have gotten. There's a few songs that actually didn't, you know, weren't singles. Yeah. I thought should have been, you know. But, you know, you, you, you roll with it and you, keep, you stay positive and you keep moving on. So, mm -hmm. on to the next. On to the next. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> um, another song that I want to ask you about is Monica's Superman because... Um, when Monica had that reality TV show out, uh, there was a clip of yourself and her in the studio, you know, just both of you in the studio working on that song. So what was that whole experience like? And, you know, just give me the background on that one. <laughs> Superman um, first started um, at the home of John T. Austin. We, Brian and myself went over there to work on a record for Monica. Um, yeah, but it was just myself, him and John T. John T. has a studio, of course, and Brian and I started the track. You know, we didn't know exactly what the theme of the song was going to be. Jante is incredibly amazing at writing a song without looking like he's writing a song. Brian and I were, were doing the track in, in the studio in one room. Jante, I believe, was watching college football. <laughs> he comes in the room. He says, load it up. He goes in the booth and just about one takes the song all the way down. Wow. It's something amazing. I, I you know, I, I don't know. I heard, I hear Jay-Z does that, but, you know, he's like the Jay-Z of songwriting. So he came up with the record Superman. Of course, at the same time, we were taping this reality TV show for Monica Still Standing, and uh, Brian and myself played the record for Monica. Monica fell in love with the record from first listen. She was like, this is, I need this. This is, this is what I need to cut right now. And at that point, I had also not only just been creating with Brian or creating for Monica and writing songs, I had also been doing a lot of the majority of her vocal production. Um, so, of course, it was my turn to do the vocal production on this particular record and seeing it all the way through. So it was just Monica and me. You know, we, we have a chemistry and a bond 
that's I think unbreakable. She's like a sister to me, and um, she understands the way I sing. And I say that because I'm not a great singer, but she can interpret what I'm trying to do and make it work and make it hers. And so that that's very important in vocal production and producing an artist is to be able to communicate with them. Whatever language you use to, to uh, express what you want them to do, make sure it's a language that they understand. And we're, we were blessed at the time and fortunate that we do, we've done so many records together that we knew each other's language and the beauty was in the song. I think it's a great record. Yeah, that was my favorite off that album. Thank uh, you. Yeah. That, that album has some great songs. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, an, another song I want to ask you about is, um, it's an unreleased song. I read about it a couple of years ago. Um, I think Brian played it on a Ustream session a couple months back, and that's the Brandy song. I think it's called Cry. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about that one. Uh, that, was, that was done several years back. Um, another combination of Brian, myself, and Adonis. We were in L.A., um, you know, getting ready to work with Brandy. And at the time, she was in the beginning stages of her project. And uh, we just came together, same, same approach, had a conversation with her and, you know, figured out what we wanted to do in terms of a uh, subject matter, what we wanted to talk about. And we knew, we knew basically we wanted to do a mid, ballady mid, kind of like what we do, the groovy tempo mids that, that we've done. Um, and Brandy goes in there and, and of course, Adonis lays down a, a scratch rough. Brandy goes in there and she is absolutely amazing. Anything you give her vocally, no matter how difficult it may be, she will take it, master it, and then take it to the next level. So with every influx of that song was Brandy's imprint, you know, and it was just phenomenal to work with an artist like that. I don't, I don't recall working with an artist quite that gifted uh, in, in, in that sense, to be able to take what you give them and to twist it and come back around and make it make sense. And you'd be like, wow, <laughs> you don't need me. You know, so she's incredibly, she's incredibly gifted in that sense. And it was a great, it was a great experience to write that record. Unfortunately, it didn't make the album. Um, you know, of course, directions change uh, within the middle of projects. And I think that song was, you know, the um, unfortunate beneficiary of a direction change. And it was early on and they went a different direction. But nonetheless, it's a great record. And I'm, I'm glad that people appreciate it. And, and I'm very excited about this new Brandy stuff that I'm working on. So. It's going to be another great adventure with her. Okay. Uh, do you think the song Cry will ever uh, be released at any point? Um, you know, you never say never. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you never say never because there have been songs that have been leaked um, or, or have been, you know, you know, created years past that have all of a sudden become singles for us. For instance, Hood Love, which was, you know, a record Jonte originally wrote for Mary, but was with, with him and Mary in mind. And there's a version of Hood Love on um, YouTube that's floating with John T Mary J. Blige featuring John T. Austin. Of course, that was years prior to the official song, the official release of the single being Mary J. Blige and Trey Songs. Yep. Um, despite it getting a lot of burn on the internet, you know, so you, that song never died. It was just a great song. So hopefully, hopefully, and if not, you know, we just create some more stuff for her. You know, um, at the end of the day, I think Cry is a great record. And uh, I think it's it's a Brandy record, and Brand I know Brandy loves that song. Um, still to the day I talked to her yesterday, I know she really still remembers that song and still loves it. You know, it's it's just a matter of what what's the direction of the project. You know what I'm saying? What's the direction of this new album? How does it fit in there? You know what I mean? Yeah. 